I talked about this in one of my other videos about, especially for me, I've always enjoyed, uh, over, especially over the past couple of years, outside, of course, of 2020, uh, doing traveling. And of course, as a result of traveling, I've settled on another country that I'm interested in living in, enjoy the nightlife, which is why I moved originally to Manhattan was because I work as a nurse, as you can probably tell by my uniform, um, and I enjoyed going out. And so I traveled to a lot of different countries, settled, settled on a particular country, also because it's much easier to find typically you know, more feminine in shape women. And so this is actually an article back from 2014. It looks more like a um, like a blog post on a on a particular website talking about it's from a female's perspective, talking about how has the obesity epidemic disrupted romance. And as I've said before, that roughly around 70 percent, I believe it's 72 percent of America are overweight or obese it's about 30 percent of people that are more on the obese end than on the spectrum of just being just being classified as overweight and so it goes on to say it says the health impacts of obesity epidemic are well documented less studies are, are its ramifications for romance and it says and it says in her book extra large love how obesity is complicating america's love life journalist Sarah varner explores how overweight, how being overweight can affect sex and love and love lives from puberty to marriage. And of course, her article talks a little bit about how typically young girls, as it says here, uh, says obesity in children has resulted in the early onset of puberty in girls, leading obese, gr leading, uh, leading obese girls who are sexually active to engage in risky behavior. It says at the time adolescents who are obese are half as likely to be to begin dating as healthy weight adolescents and of course in our lifetime you know this is you know seven years later and so of course even more so now like for example um bumble issued you know policies talking about shaming language or you know referring to people you know telling people i'm not interested in people who are fat or overweight or of this particular uh, by body size. I've even seen YouTube ad, uh, YouTube ads that talk about this exact same thing about how someone said that they didn't, that they, that when they looked at my picture, they wanted to know how fat I was, et cetera. Right. But this is of course, is actually a problem. The number one killer in America is heart disease, which is typically related to obesity, which typically individuals have either high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes. All of these of course are risk factors for things like stroke. And of course, the primary people who are impacted by these are typically blacks and Hispanics. Working close to the Bronx, many of the patients that I take care of are overwhelmingly minorities. Either they're predominantly blacks or in, for the neighborhood, the demographic is primary Dominicans. And many of these individuals, especially later on in life, are more on the morbidly obese. A lot of the patients that we take care of are closer to the 200 to 250 pounds and it's not it doesn't matter whether they're male male or female overwhelmingly many of these people that i see are typically single and of course probably being impacted by their life choices so the article goes on to say not only is obesity disrupting how and when the stages of life are marked it says it also seems to be really changing the romantic prospects for obese and overweight girls as well as boys it says the type of arguments are much more personal and they are vicious. Um, talking about, um, it says mixed weight marriages tend to have much more friction. It goes on to state here that during the past 20 years, the average weight in, excuse me, the average weight in a dating pool has changed dramatically. A time lapse series of maps from the center, and this is basically this little paragraph right here, just basically talks about over the years, more and more states have basically indicated, you know, going from 14, you know, 10 to 14% to 20% up to 25%. And of course, you know, at this time, it's even, it's even larger, you know, as I said before, 30% uh, are considered morbidly obese with 72% of the country being obese. And this is one of the reasons why, of course, that they're heavily impacted uh, by the C19 virus. Overwhelmingly, most of the people who are severely impacted by the disease are typically individuals who are obese. Now, of course, this impacts the dating market for men 
especially if you're either a man who is in shape or if you have a good career or both. Uh, primarily because many of the young women that you're going to come across are typically going to be more on the on the obese end. And if you're someone who's not interested in dating someone who's either out of shape uh, because you yourself spend a lot of time taking care of yourself, you dedicate a lot of time uh, towards your towards your career and basically establishing and stacking money and being on your purpose, you're not going to want to dedicate your time and energy to someone who for who you might deem as someone being lazy, who's, who's young and out of shape. And really young people have no reason to be out of shape because that's typically when you have the opportunity to be in the best shape of your life, where it's much easier to put on muscle, lose weight, and spend just by spending a little bit of time in the gym. So this article talks about, um, for many of these individuals, of course, they end up living, living lives alone, being severely impacted by loneliness. Um, and of course, it talks about how eventually that you know how dating would be impacted and that's primarily the problem that we have here in america in which why many individuals or at least one of the reasons why many individuals unfortunately remain single now for a lot of men who have opted to get their passports and then basically travel like myself i enjoy traveling as a result of traveling you end up meeting a lot of different women and typically the obesity and the overweight that you, or the overweightness that you see here in america is not shared in many other country and many other countries especially if you've traveled for example to places like in east asia or in latin america you typically don't see the obesity that you do see here uh, in most western countries either you know in, in the americas um canada and of course, in Europe, you will find obesity relatively around the same lines. And as a result, many men have realized might as well live abroad, which is something that I plan on doing myself. And so it actually becomes easier to meet someone that you're interested, in, especially when it comes to meeting women, because in America, because obesity and overweightness is so rampant, when men come across a woman who is beautiful, fit and in shape, she typically has a wider range of suitors because for women, it's not always necessarily about whether you're fit as an individual, which is why you'll see even some men who are a little bit leaning on the overweight side, but they have either money or resources, uh, either they have fame or whatever it is that typically will lean women into their direction. And so obviously in, in America, it artificially inflates the dating point, the dating market. So that for men, it's much harder for men to find, you know, feminine fit women that they might be interested in. And this isn't the case when you actually do a little bit of traveling abroad, which I wholeheartedly recommend. Now, when it comes to weight and dating, uh, psychology today says as we grow and mature, overweight individuals often find themselves being at a disadvantage in dating and forming long term relationships. In surveys looking at college age participants, overweight individuals are often less likely to be chosen as sexual partners when compared with those who are thinner, right? And so this is a really this is in line with the point that I was making that when you come across typically women who are thinner, they're going to have a much larger pool of men. That's why here in America, there's there's so much like as they you know they refer to as a lot of men being thirsty or simping for women and it's because there aren't as many in shape beautiful women that you would see for example if you went to like argentina or cuba or colombia or if you went into different areas for example in africa or different areas in asia where the women are much more careful about how they look because they can't afford uh, it's not like here where the government prints money or the government extracts resources from men so that they give them to women so that the women will vote for them. In other countries, they can't afford to do that like they can in America. And so as a result, just from a, a socioeconomic standpoint, women have to bring more to the table than just what they look like, uh, primarily because there's a wide, you go anywhere, you go to the deli, you come off, you step off the airport. You go to any one of the restaurants in many of these areas and one after another, after another, after you just see one beautiful woman after another. And so it becomes much more natural to see young, fit, beautiful women than by and large here in America, where you're more than likely to come across a woman who is overweight than you are to come across a woman who is fit and feminine. And as a result, 
that artificially changes the dating pool, which is why, again, like I said before, I recommend that you do some traveling. Now, in talking about typically within the black community, people often might wonder why is it that even when men who are black tend to date women who are on the, who are either Hispanic or white, but you often see like, I often, especially here in the city, um, I'll see young black men that are fit with overweight or obese white women. And of course, it's typically because of the environment that many of these individuals grow up in, right? And so according to Minority Health, um, hhs.gov, this is the Health and Human Services Office of Minority Health. It goes on to say here, it says, Afri African-American women have the highest rate of obesity or being overweight compared to other groups in the United States. About four out of five African-American women are overweight or obese. And so this is typically why you see a lot of young black men who end up getting involved with a lot of these overweight, even if they're even though know, they're white. And I'll see some of the and I just like you're just like, why? It doesn't make any sense. Like you're a guy who's in shape. Why are you going for this overweight woman? It's typically because that's the environment that they grow up in. Because more than likely their mother was overweight or obese or their sisters or their aunts, the teachers that they come in contact with, the other girls that they end up going to school with are typically more on the overweight to obese end. And so they just end up becoming products of their environment, not realizing that there, are, that there are other types of women that they can go out there and look for that are more fit, more feminine, and more likely to be looking for a relationship. Now, of course, here in America, I don't recommend anybody getting into a, a long-term relationship, especially not when it comes to marriage. But if you're someone who is, I do recommend that you do a bit of traveling, work here in the Americas, pick up a trade, do some investing, and then buy some real estate abroad when you've stacked enough cash and you're able to sustain the lifestyle that you're looking for abroad, because it's much easier to find young women who are traditionally more inclined um, especially the, you know, they're 18, 19, 20 years old who are actually looking for, um, who are actually looking for relationships and are looking for, uh, to get married and have kids. Whereas typically in America, most of these women are, you know, more focused on going to school. And of course, as a result, America is being impacted by some of the lowest birth rates that it has ever experienced over the, uh, you know, within the past 150 years. And that is not going to change. That's just because the government has no interest in um, the government really just doesn't have an interest in people being united because, of course, then it makes it harder for them to manipulate women because women in America have um, the majority of the vote. Women make up 52 percent of all voters. And so if now these women start to pair up and they go back to a more patriarchal lifestyle, it makes it much harder for the for the government and politicians to be able to try to manipulate women to you know promise them you know promise them things because those that will just be fulfilled by their husband their husband will be able well, to go out and work and provide for them for the things that they that they want while also of course being in a loving romantic relationship whereas from the governmental standpoint most of these women end up single which is what you see typically within blacks and hispanic neighborhoods where the the end result is is that overwhelming is overwhelming singleness single motherhood within blacks and hispanics it's like 70 80 percent in the black community leaning more towards 50 55 percent within hispanics and it's typically because the government utilizes the ability to sit there and print fake money to basically to give to minority women so that they go around of course and then vote for them and then the, per the cycle just perpetuates itself and so this will never go away unless there's some sort of a civil war, which would be the only way that things would revert back to a patriarchy. That's, that, that would be the only way that we would see that sort of a lifestyle come back to America. That sort of lifestyle of being married and having kids and living, you know, that leave it to beaver, you know, Brady Bunch style lifestyle is dead. And it will never come back to America unless, of course, there is some sort of a civil war. And those who lean in that direction end up winning that war like they say you know strong men end up creating good times as a result of those good times weak men end up growing up as a result of those weak times and then those turn into bad times which then call for uh, strong men to come back into the come back into the, into style but 
as many men have witnessed that the, the you know the laws here are terrible and so just like that with a flip of a switch they may say oh we're going to change the laws back more to favor men but we know that the inclination is eventually that they will go back and utilize and utilize the laws to basically uh, turn around and basically enslave women all over again probably the best thing to do is to completely leave the way the system is here and basically look for another country that is more traditionally you're probably going to end up in like a second or third world uh, country but you might find the relationship that you're looking for you might find that patriarchal um lifestyle that you're looking for but it's important that if you remember if you go overseas and you leave america don't take the mindset with you just like they say if you leave california and you come to texas or if you leave new york and you go to florida don't come with the mentality that brought you to seek refuge uh, in this new in your new home and i say the exact same thing for those of you who are le looking to leave america and maybe you want to live abroad in either in, in africa or in east asia or maybe you want to live in somewhere in latin america like in colombia or, or in argentina or maybe in, in other places don't take the mindset that you that you had here in america take it with you to where where you plan on moving